We acknowledge the Yuggera and Ghana nations as traditional custodians of the land on which we work, live and learn, and their continuing connection with the land, waters and community. We pay our respects to them and their elders past and present. All content related to this program is for general informational purposes only and contains stories and discussion around mental health that may be disturbing to some listeners. If you are concerned about yourself or someone you know, please seek professional and individual advice and support. More details are contained in our show notes. Welcome back to My Way or the Highway, where it gives me great joy to introduce your favourite coach and mine, Tone Dev! Hey there, you. Yeah. Hey, you know I've got what you want. Tone Dev really excited to be talking to you today about your new book it's all up inside of me Mm. why wouldn't you be this is amazing stuff you've built a solid reputation for just getting it done through your amazing career and you're here to show us how you know you can do it and in your book you say anyone can do it yes They can. What's the secret? Well, you know I can't give it all away here because then no one would buy my book. (laughs) 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 But seriously, it brings home a cold, hard fact. You don't need anyone. Wow, that sounds pretty bold. Mm. What about people who say we should find a good mentor? What is a mentor really going to do for you? I mean... Having a good coach like me is one thing, but every time I have looked at myself, I have stepped back and I've gone, hey, it's all up inside of me. we just got to push through and clean that prize. This is amazing. Tell me, how did you get to be an author and of such a great book? You know what? My last employer fired me. No. told me that I had a bad habit of just making shit up. Well, you showed them. I bet. And today... I want to share a little acronym from my book. As soon as I stumbled across this, it changed my life. Are you ready? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, I think we're ready. Fitter me. Fitter me. Fitter me. Fitter me. Fitter me. Yeah. Yeah. Fitter me. You can read all about it in my book. It's all up inside of me. Love, 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 love this book. What's fitter me all about? Okay, get ready for it. Mm Mm-hmm. Fake it till you make it. Huh. Fit of me. Woo! Yeah! And when I say fit of me, I'm talking about crafting your style, finding your groove, being your own mentor. You don't need anybody else. Even the great psychologist Carl Jung said we all have access to collective memory. Well, you can't argue with science. People get all knotted up going to networking events. Right. You don't need them. Fit of me. Fit of me. Fit of me. All those advisors people waste their time and money on. <laughs> I've got a handful of those. Who needs them? Fit of me. Fit of me. So you want people to read your book and take your advice? You bet. Fit of me. Isn't that kind of like having a mentor on your bookshelf? It's the only mentor that you'll ever need. My own little box is all I need because everything I need is all up inside of me. Who knew working from your own little box could be so powerful? That is exactly what I told my mentor when I fired her. Fit of me! Well, I can see my next team meeting is going to be really unique and empowering. Yep. Fit of me! And when they complain because you're freeing them, ask them why they're depending on you. Wow, so true. And everyone here today gets a copy of your book. It is all up inside of me. And now it will be all up inside of you. Fit of me! So I kind of felt like Oprah there going, you've got a car and (laughs) you've got a car and you get a car, except it was you get some bad advice and... You get some bad advice and you get some bad advice too. Yeah, and I think it's really hard sometimes to know what advice to take when so much of the messages that we hear are marketing and people are just trying to sell their own agenda. But kind of like, aren't we trying to sell our agenda with this podcast? (laughs) Bringing in the voices that support our argument? This is Reframe of Mind. 
where we deep dive into discussions about mental health, joined by some of Australia's leading minds to expand our understanding of the world and ourselves in a mostly unbiased way. Because we don't exist in a vacuum, and the way we talk about mental health shouldn't either. We're your hosts, Andy Leroy and Louise Poole. And last time on Reframe of Mind, we chatted to Keenan Muir, founder of Indigenerd, about creating communities, why it's important and how it's helpful. When we're talking about creating safe spaces, we're talking about creating a platform where you don't have to explain yourself because the same people who are in those spaces have gone through similar journeys to you. And I think that's incredibly important and powerful to not only relax yourself, but to also re-energize yourself. Crossfire attracted me because it had a lot of people who went through a similar journey to myself. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people who did struggle with anxiety, did struggle with some feelings of depression, who were, I guess, known a bit more introverted to society. Cosplay was a way for myself to, I guess, test myself and do something out of the ordinary. But what I found was a support structure within Cosplay, within finding a new circle of friends who understood what I went through. It's going back to creating safe spaces. I didn't have to explain myself because we were all there for something else. In my case, it was for Marvel, which meant I got to completely geek out over (laughs) everything Marvel. But it also opened up the conversation around mental health and coping mechanisms and providing that level of support. And Keenan told us he felt a pretty strong why when he attended the Batman convention. I was in the line to meet Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman from a lot of the games. Just standing in that line and talking to the people around me really opened my eyes in just how diverse everyone is. But we're all connecting on this one fandom and all agreeing that Batman is a kick-ass superhero and he doesn't even have powers. Coming from the longest surviving culture on the planet with ancestral connections from over 60,000 years on this continent, Keenan continues to highlight the relevance and contributions of young Indigenous people. Having created a platform, he intends to be of service for generations to come. It's a different medium, but the message is pretty much the same in terms of there needs to be more Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are not just recognised, but are fully embedded in the pop culture world, like I said, behind the camera, behind the comic book, behind the video game. I think it's incredibly important to have a diverse perspective on stories and Indigenous storytellers are some of the best in the world, in my opinion. It is quite taxing on you because you are showing your passion and You know, there's a lot of feelings of, oh, well, will other people connect with this? Is this the right thing to do? Am I saying the right things? Which I think from an Indigenous community perspective is also important because the last thing I would want to do is to hurt my community in any way, shape or form. But also in saying that we need these platforms I want to produce this platform so young people, generations in front of me can not only have this platform, but also thrive. Keenan has created a community of his own. So what if you want to create one for yourself? Well, while recovering from serious injuries, Nathan Parker, New South Wales Young Australian of the Year for 2021, recognised he needed some strong people around him for the right kind of support. Yep. And through that, he found a mentor of his own. There are a lot of practitioners out there really selling this concept of self-reliance and inner strength and inner motivation, that type of thing. So how much would you attribute your progress to your own inner strength compared to the support you had externally from the social structures and other structures around you? Yeah, it's a tricky question. I think I, there's, without a doubt, I wouldn't be where I am today without support that I had around me. Um, being in the military, that incredibly supportive environment, uh, the camaraderie of my mates and everyone. My family, I'm very lucky to have a very tight-knit family group that supported me through everything that I've faced, um, even from a young age. 
it's just yeah so but then i think there is that need to sort of build that resilience in oneself and one of the things i think my support network did for me that i found incredibly valuable was they gave me the opportunity to try but they also gave me the opportunity to fail as well and i can't imagine how hard it was for, for my parents for example to to stand there and watch me drop things over and over and over again as i was trying to learn to use my prosthetic hand but without that opportunity to to build that sort of self-belief to build that knowledge that I can do this or I will find a way to do this, then I wouldn't have been able to overcome those simple challenges, let alone the bigger ones I've faced since then. The thing that supported Nathan through his experience was something you'd expect from a tight group of colleagues or teammates. By far and large, the biggest thing was that camaraderie in that community. Uh, I look back on our Australian teams that I was a part of and there were so many incredible stories and people that had been on amazing journeys, each with their own challenges and struggles, but we were able to come together and, and share that knowledge and push each other to get better through sport. And in my mental health, like there were times in my recovery when I was going back to ADFA and navigating the challenges of working out what I could and couldn't do for a career. There were times where it felt like everything was going wrong, but I could still get on the rowing machine or I could go down to the running track. And every time I went an extra meter on the rower, or when that split second faster on the track, I was still moving forward. So even though everything else could have been a complete nightmare and, and nothing was working, sport gave me that thing that I could focus on, a bit of an escape, but also a way and a means for me to see continual progress, which was cool. How important do you think the element of spontaneity or surprise is in all of this development? I've got a story um, when we were very early on reaching out to people for one of the products we have and I was doing a call to find details for a contact and ended up actually being transferred cold to that person to have that conversation in there which I wasn't prepared for but actually in hindsight really helped us to refine the way we approach things so do you think there's also great value in the unexpected? Definitely I think for me I was never really one to to venture outside of my comfort zone too much prior to the accident um, but I was very lucky early on in my journey to meet Kurt Fernley. Uh, and one of the best pieces of advice that he gave me was that just to be open with opportunities. There's going to be so many things that might pop up um, and, and don't be afraid to try and make the most of every opportunity and, and be open to just accepting whatever may come. Uh, and that's true in my experience. And he was, he was dead right because there's been so many things that have popped up along the way. You know, as they say, one door closes, other doors open. And there's been so many doors that have opened that I never would have thought about. Uh, and I feel that by making the most and, and taking those opportunities and taking the chance and giving stuff a crack, I've actually learned a lot more and, and had some amazing experiences as a result. You know, I love the wealth of knowledge and inspiration and the way that he perceives things, Nathan Parker, like to be so young, he, he did win 2021 New South Wales Young Australian of the Year, and yet to have mm. such incredible perspective on life and adjusting. I mean, that's something that we are, Andy, much older and still reaching for. Yeah. And, you know, like if we kind of take his wisdom into some of the traumatic events that we've spoken about in previous episodes. <gasps> I thought we promised no episode. trauma, no trauma this episode. No trauma this episode. But, you know, we did actually embark on a pretty significant change amongst all of that, which was starting a business. Yeah. So one door closes, another one opens. I mean, mm -hmm. it's good wisdom from Nathan Parker. Also, a, a really good way to sort of segue into that when we started this journey of this podcast, Reframe of Mind, it was also a time where both of us got together and said, you know what, we're going to start a business based around podcasting. And yeah. the door that closed was our previous careers and the one that opened was being entrepreneurs and business people. Which was exciting, but also kind of daunting, you know, mm. because there are obviously challenges along the way in starting a business. I mean, starting a business is lonely. Yeah, it's a completely different experience. For us, starting a business around a really new idea, something that hasn't been done much before, if at all. Yeah, and, and also that sense of not having an office of colleagues to go into. <gasps> what? Our talk around the water cooler every day wasn't enough for you. Mm, well. It was a virtual water cooler. It was a virtual water cooler and sometimes you want to get you know, Bob or Jane's opinion too. <laughs> don't they? Don't they run a, own a tea mart? The own a tire shop. Bob and Jane. They're too busy, too busy putting tires on people's cars. <laughs> 
I mean, look, the thing about starting a business as a partnership as well is we both probably had the capacity to start a business alone. We didn't need a partner. We both had skills. It makes it more fun, though, to do it together. It was certainly a more comfortable idea to look at starting a business together than by ourselves. It definitely felt like a greater motivation to start Welcome Change Media together because it, it felt like, you know, knowing that there was going to be somebody else there along on the journey with me was actually a better prospect than just opening up a computer screen and doing everything by myself. That would have been you know, pretty lonely. It's the friends we make along the way. Mm. I feel like we should um, get out some lighters and hold hands and start <laughs> swaying. I've got a fire detector in the studio, so I don't know if that's such a great idea. But <laughs> Okay, so it has opened up a lot of opportunities for collaboration, though, um, which is very, very beneficial on all our projects, including this one. And I've been someone that I think for most of my career has been really, really stuck on doing things my way. So it's been an adjustment to collaborate with you, but it does result in better ideas. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. And, you know, we we have these conversations as well about how sometimes that collaborative process can be a little bit challenging for either one of us. You know, I get the poops if you give me feedback sometimes. And (laughs) it seems like I give you the poops when I want to kind of put the brakes on something and work on something else. Oh, I don't like it when you tell me no. No. I've noticed. I have noticed. Have you you ever noticed that I need to be a little bit dominating? Mm -hmm. And not, not just in the bedroom. (laughs) <laughs> but you know i mean you're right it has opened up a lot of opportunities and even doing reframe of mind we've met so many wonderful people and mm. hello suzanne mercia yeah. loved chatting to us so much that she's got us working on some social media content for her yeah we met her um for the imposter syndrome episode we did way back and then formed a connection and and now we chat to her regularly which is really cool collaboration Love works it. I know. Amazing. Who'd have thought? Speaking of collaboration and a bit of a self-plug for ourselves, uh-huh. uh, we also just launched a podcast series called WNA Trailblazers in partnership with Women's Network oh, Australia. Really? How good's that? C- can I add? Uh, and you remember where that yeah. came from? That came from me reaching out to um, Cheryl, who was the CEO of that, and asking her for her opinion on something. And then we formed a relationship from there. And it, we live happily ever after as a result. Collaboratively. with. More projects in the pipeline, which is exciting. I mean, you know, I know we have the occasional moan. Which kind of moan? Because we did just reference me being dominant. (laughs) 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 Um, Well. I'll stick to the script. Speak for yourself, lol. (laughs) (laughs) Lol is more of a. (laughs) (laughs) Or do you mean we have the occasional moan? (laughs) Um, look i'm lucky this isn't the professional like imagine if this was the professional pitch like come and listen to us for all the expert advice and um i'm I'm glad Mm. this is in the mental health podcast because this is it's a it's a little blue it is a bit blue but getting back to the actual conversation Mm. (laughs) when i look at where we are today and with the clients that we've got and the several podcast series on our network I mean, let's not forget Willow Tree Manor. I mean, certainly not. Uh, or Captain Obvious. Or Elevating Experts. Hello. If more people had heard Elevating Experts, they would know that voice, but they don't yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> do right you are, Louise, do right. So Captain Obvious aside, I think we've really embraced collaboration. Um, and we're mm. doing it a lot in areas now of both the how and the what, which actually feels really creative. Yeah, both of us are building even more confidence, I reckon, to get Mm -hmm. out there and meet other people through business networks, for example. That comes Mm. back to that comfort zone again, doesn't it? Like, I feel like when we were first approaching networking as an idea, you know, go to functions or just go out of our way to try and meet people, even if we were doing it online. I think I, from my perspective, was approaching it as if I'm a representative of Welcome Change Media rather Mm. than Welcome Change Media is just Louise and Andy. That's that's it. It's just the two of us. Um, and if this series yeah. so far has shown anything, uh, hopefully it's how much I've changed as a person in embracing my own authenticity and, and removing those masks. And the thing about networking now, besides the fact that I'm surprisingly 
enjoying it from someone who's been an introvert for most of their life, I actually feel like I'm able to talk to people now as me without a mask and it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah, same. I mean, I also used to feel really uncomfortable walking into networking meetings. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty good socially, I think, but I remember that first networking meeting that I did go to and I did the typical hang around back of the room, um, try and cling on to someone to chat to, that type of thing. And when I went to recently, it was really much, much less like that and I was more comfortable because I'm starting to get to know people. And, you know, I think even though we chose to do this Welcome Change Media together, mm. there's no reason why someone couldn't have chosen to do it themselves. No, but it also doesn't mean that we're a completely closed unit either that doesn't help other mm. people out along the way. Yeah, and 2021 Queensland Australian of the Year, Dinesh Palapana. Oh, I love Dinesh. Yeah, Dinesh is awesome. Do you know why I love Dinesh? Kind of, but I feel like you're going to tell me anyway. <laughs> You know me too well. Um, I love Dinesh because he validates our decision by telling us it's important to have people around us that will support us. And I love me some validation. Yes, which is what we've created together for starters. I mean, we've got each other's back and we don't need one person to be everything for us. I mean, that would just be needy. Uh Uh-huh. And it's good to know that depending on the type of support we need, there's always going to be someone willing and able to help. No person is an island. We're all a part of this fabric that makes up humanity. And I think it's important to surround yourself with people that believe in what you believe and that will support you through what you believe. So sometimes, no matter how crazy the idea is, I think that's really made a big difference in my life. Last year, late last year, I got the opportunity to give something to the National Museum of Australia for the Australian of the Year Awards. And it was an object that's of significance to me. So the object I chose was one of my scrub tops. And I got the people that have played a part in my journey to sign it. So there were signatures from everyone from the fireman that cut me out of the car to the surgeon that operated on me to the educators that took me through medical school to my mom to my friends. So I think um, for me, that's really symbolic because we are a product of the people around us and the people around us leave an imprint on our lives forever and they made me who I am. So it's got Dr. Dinesh Palapana written on the scrub top. So they were responsible for helping to create that person. So to surround yourself with such people and to acknowledge them and celebrate them is really important. Celebrate the people around you. You have to. We, we are who we are because of them. For Lisa Tarmody, New Zealand ultra marathon runner and endurance coach, it's all about the right mentor coming along at the right time. It also sparks the question for me of how we approach mentors and going out in search of mentors. I think sometimes when I've thought about going out to, to find somebody to give me some help, it might be more from a point of trying to validate or trying to reach for some kind of perfectionism. So is there value in relaxing off that a little bit and just allowing a bit more exploration and not relying so much on somebody else's opinion? Yeah, I think there is. You know, I think that we just need to. I find that people that I'm meant to meet or whatever will come across my path when I'm in flow and I'm in action, I'm taking action. And instead of, again, trying to get that perfect person or the perfect coach or the perfect whatever, but just starting wherever you are, bumbling your way along until you get there, you know, and then people will come across your path. I do believe the universe puts people in in our path when we need them. (laughs) You know, what do they say? The right teacher will turn up when the student's ready. The other Lisa... Lisa Alexander, but not Lisa Salzman, because we've had several Lisas on this show. (laughs) Lisa turned out to be a very popular name for Reframe of Mind. It did. It did indeed. Hi to all the Lisas listening. Happy birthday, Uh, Lisas. Happy birthday, Lisa. Notice how I changed that by at least 10%, so we didn't get done by copyright. Mm. But anyway, Lisa Alexander, on the other hand, is all about going out and intentionally seeking your own board of directors. Having your own board of directors, which is it might be your best mates or whatever, that give you feedback about how you're going, or it could be work colleagues, but you certainly can do it on your own. And these activities are actually done, particularly the putting together your success file, Mm. which I call your success file. You can do that on your own and you can do it in your personal life or your professional life or both. So, Louise, Mm -hmm. as a woman... Mm -hmm. Yes, why do I feel like this might end up with one of those statements, like, I'm not a racist, Mm. but? No, have you ever felt, as a woman, like you had good, reliable access to good mentors? Um, That's a tough one, isn't it? 
Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to have to say no on that one. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Say it. Fuck the patriarchy. Um, <laughs> Fuck the patriarchy. But the thing is, um, you know, I've had, what was it, 20 odd years in media. Um, mm. I'm not young. It was a, a struggle uh, against a lot of people who, um, as one person said to me, I, I don't want to hire you if you're going to be a pioneer. I don't need a pioneering woman in this role. I just want someone to do the job. Mm. And, I mean, what the fuck does that even mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to even think it, but to fucking say it? Come on. Yeah, and then, anyway, that's Please. that's the kind of you know industry I got a career in. So I don't want it to be a conversation always about gender inequality because, you know, hashtag not all men. Some men are really supportive and nice, but as an overall generalisation, yes, I kind Mm -hmm. of feel like men have been able to get themselves a mentor more easily and I've never had a female mentor. And when I have had male mentors in my career, they have probably... Can, can I can I sidetrack with a, a super tiny story? Is it traumatic? Because no. we have given the no trauma guarantee this no, no. episode. It's not tra- traumatic. It's um. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I was studying. We know what we know what Louise is like when she starts going down the garden path. So I was I, I was um this is many 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 years ago and I was studying a commercial radio programming with the Australian Film Television Radio School. It was a online course and as part of the course, what they do is they organise you mentors. Because so the mentor, basically, you partner up with somebody who's further ahead in their career and they give you guidance and, you know, have a look over your work and you have a discussion with them. So so this is a pro- like they commit to being a part of the program and they say, yes, I'm going to take a take on one of these people who also work in the industry and I'm going to, you know, mentor them as they do. So I get a mentor. My mentor is a man. They tell us to approach the mentors. So I approach the mentor. Blah, blah, blah. Hey. It's Louise and I'm the thing and you've been assigned my mentor. So I'm wondering when we can, you know, have a chat. Hmm. Tumbleweeds. Oh. I follow it up. Hey, blah, 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 blah. Just checking. You got this, blah, blah, blah. Tumbleweeds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seems um, like it might be appropriate to play the crickets. <laughs> Sound I would effect have, here. I'm like, I could, I don't even know. I've, I can put it in post. Put it in, add it in post because I don't want to reach out. It's too far. Yeah, exactly. So I, I tried to call. Um, I, I, I think I tried to contact this person for about um, six weeks or so at the start of the course, and eventually I went back to them and I said, look, I'm having trouble getting a hold of my mentor. They're just not answering any of my stuff. And they're like, okay, we'll find you another mentor. And then they got me a, another mentor. And, and that next mentor. They were probably busy, right? They, they might have been busy. That men- next mentor was fantastic, um, and and yeah. and, that, and that was a man, and he, and he was great. He was a really nice person, really helpful, and you know, have I have a lot of respect for him. Don't have a lot of respect for the first one, and I just can't help but think, mm-hmm. given that this person had mentored a lot of other people in the course previously, but they were all men, and based on the things that I had circumstantially heard about this person that I was mm. ghosted because I was a woman. Mm. You shouldn't have turned up with a vagina. <laughs> my aside to that is... How dare you? <laughs> my aside to that is in, sometimes in some industries, even when you bloody will try and get yourself a mentor because the only people who have made it to certain echelons of success are men, you can't even get yourself mm. a fucking mentor because they don't want to help assist a woman on the way up. Yeah, you know what, from what I read and even some of the stories that I'm starting to see and hear through the collaboration that we're doing with Women's Network, I think it'd be pretty safe to say that you're not alone with your experience in finding a mentor, you know. like Yeah, how tough it is. I think, yeah, yeah I, and Jacinta Carboon pointed that out for us. She's the female economy expert and she is the one that really started to kind of get our radars clicking on how good an idea it would be to have a mentor. 
I feel like it's almost more common for men to have mentors and the mentee relationship and for women to do that. But do you think that we don't share because we feel like we do have to carry everything ourselves and bottle it all up? Yes, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, you, th- you think you have to make this work yourself. And and very much so, like in the, you know, in the corporate environment, which I spent a large part of my career, you know, mentors were, men had mentors, a lot of mentors. It wasn't really, you didn't really even think, you know, you were relevant. You were in a position to have a mentor, but that's sort of, that's definitely also changed. But you have to be aware that you need to be vulnerable and as well, and that it's okay to be vulnerable. And I'd actually say a lot of men aren't okay with that either. Like they're very, very, they, they put on the facade that everything's all okay and it's all good and I've got to make this work and I've got to earn the money and, you know, so, that you know, that's quite a challenge. So it's a different perspective. But actually women are, are found quite good at sharing um, because women like relationships. They like to do generally as a general perspective, like to do and work in an environment where they have a good, strong relationship with the people around them. So, but it is actually being okay with yourself to be vulnerable. You know, you've got, you can share some things. You don't want to share everything because you want to protect yourself, of course, and you, you know, you don't want to be too vulnerable. To be saying, but, but it is actually, I think women are probably a bit better at that than men in reality. And that's, but, but also still you have to protect yourself today. So you don't want to, it's finding that balance. And going back to mentors, um, I can say that your mentors are good because they will help you with skills and advice and helping you give direction and all that, you know, open up uh, opportunities for you. And generally, quite you can have informal and formal mentors. But the most important people you want to have is sponsors. A sponsor is actually somebody who it's not necessarily a formal arrangement that could, that could be, but a, a sponsor is somebody who will talk on your behalf when you're not there, who will put you forward for opportunities when you're not there. Somebody who's going, it's like your mum or, you know, your best buddy who's going to talk about you when you're not there. That's, and those sponsorship relationships are much more important for my, for my experience than what mentors are, but they're also harder to make happen because, you know, no one's going to speak on your behalf in a positive way with that when you're not there unless they actually feel that way. So they have to see, you know, you have to develop relationships and a positive relationship with people who can be your sponsor. Um, I really like that idea of the distinction between um, you know, the sponsor and the mentor because yeah. it really um, speaks to me to a, a different kind of relating as well. But I'm not even sure that men would be conscious of that, to be honest. I think that that speaks to a, a type of a level of relating that, that really is extremely valuable, but is possibly unconsciously done with an edge of competition between men. Yeah, that's yeah, quite, yeah true, actually. But um, it does happen. You know, like men, mentors would, may go on to be your sponsor, but not necessarily so. The challenge is how do you develop that relationship? You know, this is how it still happens. You know, men go and play golf together. They go and have drinks at the pub together, blah. And, you know, there's, there's things most women just can't do that, mainly because they just don't have the time or they've got other commitments. It's easier for men to get together than what it is for, um, and also, you know, there's issues around, like, if you're, you know, male and female having dinner, you know, people have a perception, like, there's some bias about this, you know, there's something going on between those two, whereas if you saw two men having dinner or two women having dinner, it'd be different. So how to actually find a way to develop those relationships, um, typically between males and females, is a challenge, but there are ways to do it. You just got to, you know, you just have to make it. You have to think, you have to be conscious. Women particularly have to be conscious about how they're going to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like, oh, I'm not, I'm just making this, developing this relationship because I want them to be my sponsor. Well, that's fine. It's good. Well, why not? You know, like don't, you don't have to feel like, oh, I'm just doing this for myself um, because there'll be something positive for them in it as well. But it's you're finding ways to do it and you just can't necessarily go and play golf with a bunch of blokes to make that happen. So maybe you're an entrepreneur. Or maybe you're just starting out on your own wondering why anyone would possibly want to help you. Well, as someone who deals with entrepreneurs all the time, Professor Alex Moritz from the Latrobe Business School assures us that people love to help. These people Entrepreneurs by nature give back to society. So they love their mentorship. I was on a tangent earlier. I was speaking about ageism and discrimination and saying about discrimination in the workforce. I'm not really one for that because I believe my roots and my background just tell me fight for who you are and what you are. But from a perspective of conformist of being, let's just say, in the total economy and that, this thing with discrimination and so on, it's very surprising that when we do the studies on discrimination of mature age people in the workforce, and there's a big tick, yes, 
It's predominant. It's very big in the workforce. We do not see that prevalence in entrepreneurship. So in other words, younger entrepreneurs like mixing with old entrepreneurs because they know they can get information from them. They know they can get a wealth of experience from them. They're savvy enough to realize they see that opportunity. So in considering the right mentor for you, it's worth having a think about the type of people whose achievements and even sense of style you'd like to emulate. And we had a pretty good conversation about all of this with mindfulness coach Annie Harvey. I look at what healthy relationships are. So um, Jim Rohn once famously said, we're we're the average of the five people we spend most time with. So if you if you just count that on your hand, and you two might have to include your cats in that as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> There's a bit of laziness with. going on there. There's a lot of destruction <laughs> going on in my house. <laughs> Um, And then you're, you know, you're the average of those five people. So if you wanted to in, if you want to start looking after yourself or, I don't know, learning a new skill, practicing meditation or learning how to swim or whatever it is, or going on a particular diet, you, you don't, you don't marry condo those people and ditch them out of your lives, Mm -hmm. but you start bringing people into your circle of influence that that can raise that average because we all know those people that don't encourage us to do that necessarily. And I think when we're sick or we're not feeling great, we don't necessarily have around with the right people. What else would you say is in your daily toolkit? <laughs> I think I've, haven't I not overshared already? <laughs> <laughs> not as much as Andy at the grocery store, apparently. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> I get my $20 um, worth, don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the biggest thing for me is is the is my connections, I think. So I talk about um, having high self-efficacy, which is when I was trying to be a teacher, I didn't even know what the word meant. Um, but it's around, and that's what World Health Organization say, that if you have low low self-efficacy, so low, low belief in your competence. So you might have, like I've got all the skills in the world to prevent burnout, but do I believe that I can actually use them and be successful at that? And my answer would be yes, but mm. I have quite low self-efficacy when it comes to doing my tax return tomorrow, for example. Yeah. So I would I, I look at that a lot on how I can bring people into my circle of influence, you know, observe other people that are really great at doing it and having mentors and even just feeling into the fear of sitting down and doing the thing. And Lucy Bloom is a coach and mentor to CEOs and she finds that a smaller circle serves her best. Yeah, for Lucy, it's about shared values in the people she's looking for. It's nice to be nice, but it's better to be bold, which is actually a headline written by Jane Caro. And I truly live by that. It's it's nice to be nice, but yeah, there's some fakery under that if you're nice to everyone all the time. It's better to be bold and direct. Um, I find myself seeking out, uh, and this may be a post-40 thing too, I've got a much smaller circle of close friends and then um, and then and then I don't bother. But I'm not I'm not unkind. I just spend my I spend my juicy time with the with the really juicy people. And you know, they say you're a you're the um, the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, I guess I seek out the genuine people and the weirdos like me. <laughs> so, so nice is nice, but it's better to be bold and brave. So I've noticed that all the guests that we've had so far in this episode, Andy, and I'm not shitting on your ability to put together a script <laughs> and a rundown um, because you we are to, we That's are talking about mentor. Me. We are talking about mentorship or. I don't know if you've used the yeah. term yet already, but not gender specific, them tourship. I haven't used that, but that is a good term. <laughs> so, and a mentor is a mentor is a them tour. So when we're talking about them tourship, <laughs> a lot of, <laughs> these examples have all been in a business context, but it doesn't have to be mm. only in a business context that you have a, a them tour in your life. No, 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 no. I mean, you know, aside from in the business context, you can have mentors for all sorts of things. Them tours? It can be them tours. Sorry, I'm being gender inappropriate. But we could really, I mean, and we do, we seek mentors all the time. And so whether you're starting out your own business or whether you're in a career in corporate, for example, or even if you are a creative person. Oh, good for, I'm glad you gave the third example because I thought you were just going to give me yeah. two examples of careers. No. <laughs> Or even if you're someone who's creative, an artist, mm. and want to actually explore different avenues of your artistry, mentors are a great resource to have. Another way that we could look at the them tourness of it all, um, outside of the business context, is in when you form a partnership with people for your own self development. 
and Professor Leanne Carey. She's the founding head of the Neuro Rehabilitation and Recovery Research Group Stroke Division at the Florey Institute of Neuroscience. And she talked to us about partnerships of a different kind from the perspective of a therapeutic relationship. How important is the concept of being able to encourage yourself through all of this? I can imagine, you know, there must be quite a few barriers for someone who's experiencing this type of uh, limitation. Mm. How, how do we go about helping them to encourage themselves? I think that's a really important part. And I think there's also encourage themselves, but there's also a partnership that's formed in, in this training. And a lot of people are really challenged by a sensory loss and some of the cognitive and emotional challenges. Um, that go with it. So perhaps if we think about where it starts, it's actually hard to imagine what it might be like if you can't feel down one side of your body, you can't feel if an object's in your hand, um, you can't feel where your arm is, if it's behind your back or able to reach into your pocket, etc. So with that, people can often refer, you know, it can be quite distressing and yet it's a hidden problem uh, and they lose that sort of connection. So One big step of the way is for the person to feel safe and supportive in that first place and to acknowledge some of those demands and perhaps even those emotional problems um, with the experience of the altered sensation. But what we've also heard from these people is that they report that harnessing the positivity in the relationship is important. How have you uh, applied what you've learned to your own life? How has that made a difference to you? Yeah, I think there's, there, there's many um, elements of it. Perhaps even the partnership way of it, the coaching is quite important. And and, uh, and I suppose more personally, you know, it, it's always taking that discovery approach to learning, to look beyond what's just close to you, yeah. to see how the other parts work in, in, in conjunction with it, to strengthen it, to be open to to those different ideas and senses and to to really see how the jigsaw comes together. And Lisa Alexander, AM, iconic netball coach, formerly with the Australian Diamonds, and now she's head of high performance and assistant coach for the London Pulse was more than happy to dive into the subject of mentors with us. I'm really impressed that you brought up the concept of a mentor in this part of the conversation, Lisa, because so often we, I think as individuals, feel we have to do everything ourselves and come up with the answers ourselves. But you've worked with mentors yourself. And I'm just wondering, what are the qualities you look for in your mentors? Yeah, it's a really good question. I have mentors that are younger as well. Um, I was really lucky to have some interactions with Holly Ransom, who's I think about 20 years younger than me, and I call her my young mentor. She teaches me a lot about what young people are thinking and feeling, and I guess I do the same for her from you know my perspective back to her. I, I guess I'm looking for people who are positive and want to encourage and want to you know support you on your journey. Um, you and you need people who are not going to tell you any bullshit, basically. Mm. If I can mm. use that term, yeah. um, go ahead. <laughs> you need you need people who are giving you accurate, honest feedback to assist you to move forward in whatever sp- field it is, or even just to chew the fat. I've often picked people who've been who've walked in my shoes, so people that have been high performance coaches. So I had Joyce Brown as my mentor during the time when I was coaching Australian Diamonds and well before that. She's been there and done that. So, of course, around netball and strategy and tactics and all of that, you know, she was just so great to listen to. She would always have me thinking about things in a different way that I had maybe got stuck. Um, And she was also very, very encouraging and really cared about me as a person. She did that so well with her athletes before it was even you know, recognised as the way to go. She was doing that back when she was coaching the Australian team, you know, giving them books to read that were different to netball or encouraging them in their career outside of netball. So she looked after the whole person. She's a teacher as well. And Bill Sweetenham was a great mentor because he really gave me, I guess, the hard-nosed, hard-edge, high-performance approach that really was reaching for the stars and said, why not? And why can't you be the best team in the world and better than the All Blacks? 
Um, you don't need the same amount of money. It's all about work and effort. And, you know, I guess he encouraged me in that way. He also taught me about the politics of dealing with boards of directors, mm. how I, because I hated all of that, the politics of it. But I came to realize it was part of what I had to do in my role. And so he definitely helped out with that. Um, as did my husband, who's been an enormous, you know, support uh, for me in so many different areas. Um, I'm eternally grateful. There's no way I would have gone for the job without his support. Um, I probably would have still been teaching maths at Wesley College. So you've got to have, I guess, people who in different areas take a different role as well. Um and you're not going to just have one. It sounds like that adage, the old adage of, you know, the best leaders um, bring people in around them that have the skills that they're lacking to kind of create that whole picture on its own. Yeah, that's right. We can't be good at everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think the best leaders recognise that and know themselves so well that they know they're going to appoint people who are going to be really good in a particular area that helps the whole program or organisation to run at its best. And that's, you know, certainly what I've experienced over my working life. But also the idea of um, setting up this kind of network of mentors around you, even like what we were discussing before, even if you're an individual, you kind of have created your own team in doing that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, that, that that's as human beings, we're very social. And at the end of the day, you know, we're going to have people around us who we choose to spend time with. And that's why you've got to be very discerning about who you spend time with. <laughs> yes. And mm. one of the lessons you learn as you get older is that real friends are real friends. And, you know, colleagues at work are different. You start to learn and understand the differences as you get older and wiser. And, you know, that's all part of your individual and personal growth as a person, um, understanding who the ways that you can lean on certain people or you, you also need to do the leaning as well. You need to do the supporting and being the mentor as well. I think actually being a mentor helps you to understand what you need from a mentor as well. So I've always said that if you can teach something to someone is the best, you know, highest level of learning that you can do. Jacinta Carboon, mm -hmm. wouldn't you just love to chat her a coffee or two to share some more stories? Oh, you know, I would. I love talking to Jacinta. She's like retrospectively the kind of person that I want to be in the future, you know, to have advocated for women to stand up there so strong and, 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 and keep on working towards that equality and, and support and being able to support other people. She's actually the one that told us about the added dimension that a good mentor can bring to a working relationship. This can be a positive relationship. So, you know, mm -hmm. like, and look, if you don't ask, you don't get. But, you know, like you do, you have to put yourself out there and you have to do it. Like they don't, someone doesn't know that you want this if you don't let them know. You know, they're, they're not going to, and most people are obviously thinking about themselves. Oh, we all are. I mean, that's how we exist. That's just life. But, you you know, if you actually can find a way to have that chat and it's, it's about what's in it for them as well. So, you know, like it's something you might be able to do for them that is something that's going to be of interest. You definitely, actually, I would encourage you to do that. Like think about if there's somebody you think who could be a sponsor in your life, personally or for your career or whatever, think about what's in it for them, for me being involved and, in, you know, having this, what what can I do that's actually going to be something positive? Give them something and you'll get something back. And it's, yeah, it's like that. It is that self-doubt. But like, you know, so I've been to, in my corporate career, I used to go, sometimes I'd have roles where I'd be the only person from the organiser of Telstra at this particular, like, for example, I was involved in the hospitality, travel and tourism industry looking at what was going on in the industry. So I would be the only person from Telstra there. And I'd go to these events and I'd be thinking, oh, this is, well, I, don't, I don't know anybody here. This is not standing around by myself. It's, you know, really uncomfortable. And I would just push myself through it. I would just say, just stay here, get yourself a drink, stand here. Someone, you know, talk to somebody, someone will come and talk to you. And I would just force myself to do it. And then by the end of it, I would be there talking to everybody. And, you know, the, the, they, and they'd want to know why I, why I was from Telstra and why I was there and why I was interested. And that, that was engaging for them and you know I'd end up going getting invited to some amazing meetings and amazing, amazing connections but if I hadn't pushed myself through that very uncomfortable zone and stayed there and made myself available and open then it wouldn't have happened. Pushing yourself through it um, and it's not easy um, but you, the, the benefits 
uh, enormous. You're speaking to my soul all the times I've been to a, a, a networking event and I've stood there going, I don't know how to make small talk and yeah. I don't know what to say. And uh, yeah. speaking to my soul. So push yourself, go through it. and Push yourself. You will be amazed. I have done this so, many, like, so much in my career. Just remember pretty well everyone else in the room is feeling much the same, even though they might, they might be having a conversation with someone. Don't run out the door. Just hang in there. Um, and <laughs> Like it's amazing. It's so it's but most people are feeling this. I you know I'm not a big small talk person either. But you do you know you have to you have to find a way to get a conversation going, and then you never know where it will lead. That yeah. idea isn't it where like you you surround yourself with the people that you kind of want to be like. Yeah, I, I forget what that cliche phrase is, but it's kind of rise to that standard of the people you surround yourself with. So that's we right. should try and surround ourselves with awesome, strong, powerful people. Well, that's exactly that. You are absolutely right on the money. That's exactly it. You know, be around the people that you want to be, or be you know that you actually admire, or you you see that are you know because they will help. They will just their energy will lift you up anyway. Um, um, and you know, find ways to connect with them, and be interested, and pay attention, and just remember everybody's looking at it and what's in it for them as well. So you know, like, so this is that's just human nature. That's just what we do. That's how we exist. We we've got to work. You know, we've got our such busy lives doing so many things. We haven't got time to think about what's in it for you for someone I don't even know you. You know, like we've got to think about what can I do that is actually going to be useful for them. And that's actually going to then also be relevant for me. And that's okay. It, it seems like there, um, there's a bit of a shift in, in thinking that needs to occur for someone who might not necessarily see their self-worth to going into a conversation saying, actually, this is something that I can offer you in return. What would be your best piece of advice for someone who's in that point where they just cannot see outside of that square? You have to stand back and look at what's going on. So uh, as an example, when I was at NAB, I was really passionate around the women's business. I could see so many opportunities. But I just knew that the senior te- leadership team weren't going to listen to what I had to say unless I put it in a position that was relevant to where their thinking was at. Finding a link in some way that's relevant. But I think it's Lisa Alexander who summed it up best for us. Yes, perfectionists, get your finest pens ready and take note old adage of the best leaders bring people in around them that have the skills that they're lacking to kind of create that whole picture on its own. Yeah, that's right. We can't be good at everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the best leaders recognise that and know themselves so well that they know they're going to appoint people who are going to be really good in a particular area that helps the whole program or organisation to run at its best. And that's, you know, certainly what I've experienced over my working life can't be good at everything as much as we try though mm. Mm. and and we certainly have tried <laughs> what we have been good at though i think is assembling this stellar cast of guests for this episode and throughout the series oh, so yeah. far with so much incredible advice and wisdom if you want to hear their full episodes you can go back through the back catalog of reframe of mind or find them at reframeofmind.com.au yeah it's really such a great lineup of people that we've have been fortunate to speak to across this entire series. They've got such great tips and great advice. And, you know, in some small way, it's almost like we've had 31 mentors <gasps> across the series. What? <laughs> I think you mean them tours across the series? Them tours, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because actually the conversations that we've had with these incredible people really are doing what a mentor does, which is, you know, supporting us and guiding us and taking us to those next levels of our journey in our career, in our personal lives. I think one of the big things that we've got out of particularly the people that have featured in this episode is their words have helped us to understand that need to advocate for ourselves and our support and what we Mm. need and what we want and to actually be authentic and truthful. Yeah, 100%. And next time on Reframe of Mind, we're speaking to author and comedian Nellie Thomas, who opens our eyes to the importance of speaking your truth. I felt very countercultural for a long time. Not now. Once I hit 40, I'm like, I don't know, zero fucks given. 
You've been hearing our story and now we really want to hear yours. Connect with at Reframe of Mind on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and Twitter. Or connect with at Welcome Change Media on LinkedIn. You can also contact us via reframeofmind.com.au with your stories or suggestions for future topics. We'd like to thank today's guests for sharing their personal stories and insights. For more information on any of the subjects, guests or references used in this episode, please see our show notes or reframeofmind.com.au. Reframe of Mind is a Welcome Change Media production. Felisa, New Zealand ultra marathon runner and Felisa. Felisa. Sorry. Felisa. You wrote it. Felisa. You wrote Felisa. I didn't write Felisa. I wrote for Lisa. For Lisa. Felisa. <laughs> for, for Lisa. Hang on. <laughs> You've got the sillies. Stop it. Have, You've got the sillies. It's a nice change from having the grumps. Or the poops, as you called it before. The poops. I had that. Can I, I told, I'll, I'll tell you about my poop story this morning. Are we saving you that did. for Brizzolade? Look. One day when you hear the episode Poop Milkshake, you'll get to know what it was. <laughs> Stop it. Brizzolade coming soon. Or not. We'll see how it goes. <laughs>